Welcome to the Jeff Knows Inc. Entrepreneurial Show with your host, Jeff Lopes. We are live. We are live on the Jeff Knows Inc. Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Lopes. Super excited to have on today, David Driven. What is up, brother? Good to meet you, man. I love that you're from Toronto. That's awesome. Before we went live, we, we just started. I, I, I wanted to push record because I had no idea. First off, David was from Toronto. Lee fan. We're going to have this conversation that goes totally everywhere today. So I, I love it. When I do our conversations, it's, it's a pure rock conversation. So I never know where Lee's going to go. I try to be as, uh, as, as, as almost curious as possible because I try not to learn as minimal as I can about the guests and then go through their story of their life and try to figure out. And knowing that you're from Toronto, I'm, I'm excited to hear. Let's, let's talk about the beginning. Where did it all start? Where did the passion of ours start? Talk about your days in Toronto. We actually probably bumped into each other one way or another. We're probably more kids because we lived literally a few blocks away, not that far away from each other. So let's talk about your, to your childhood, living in Toronto, growing up in Toronto. I was born and raised in Toronto. I went to three different high schools. I was a, a rebel in high school. What, what high schools did you go to? I went to Forest Hill for grade, uh, grade nine. I, and I just realized that that wasn't the school for me. And then I went to St. Andrews College for grade 10 and 11. Yeah. And then I went to a Metro Prep for grade 12 and 13. And the reason why it was so great to go to three different high schools is all the diverse characters that I met at three different high schools, as yeah. opposed to going to one high school. So it, it showed me how to interact with diverse characters. And that was a great foundation for life, diversity. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, you can't, it's funny because when I have, I get, I interview a lot of American, um, uh, whether influencers, celebrities or whatnot, um, artists, different people. And when I hear their stories and I think of living in Toronto, how diverse our society is, where it's like the mixture of race, the mixture of cultures, it's, it's so amazing. And you experience that just at, magnify that to another level, which was, I think is pretty, pretty cool. So I love being from Toronto, man. I, I really, I love being Canadian. I love being from Toronto, but I felt like the ceiling's only so high for what I do and yeah, yeah. you make it at the level that I want to make it at. I think you have to be based in like a, a city like New York and be international. To get when, to the level when, that when, when did you when when did the art the, the passion for art start? Let's talk about that. Well, it actually it actually started because I came to New York in the summer of 1992, and I went to the American to try, and I realized very quickly that I was a very bad actor. But having such a great experience by being so bad at something led me to realizing that I wanted to be a creative person. And at the time, I was actually going to University of British Columbia. So my roommate in Vancouver wanted to be a photographer. I was like, that's the biggest loser thing that I could ever imagine anyone ever doing. Like, what are you going to be an artist? You're so creative. You're so artistic. <laughs> and then one day my roommate came home. His name was Steve. And he laid out all these black and white photographs of his coworkers. And their souls jumped off the page, literally like magic. And that was the moment I said, this is what I want to do this is what I want to be. And I need to go to New York city and I've got to make it happen. It all happened a split second. It was like my, the ultimate aha moment for me, the moment of all moments. How, how old were you? I was 23. I'm 52 now in August. So 23, 1990, basically 1993, 1992 is when I, when I found photography and I've never wavered like ever. Since the moment I, he laid down those five photographs in black and white of his coworkers, from that moment, I've never wavered for one second ever with the passion, the goal, and the relentless pursuit. Never, not even for a second. It's been in my mind how, how, all day. Over, over the years, because I have a few friends that are photographers, and for my main company, um, we have a, a photographer who shoots all our product and all that stuff. Where's how? Uh, let's start off with how has your your vision or your understanding of photography grown over the years? Was there a peak moment? Was there something like? Is there is this consistently growing? You the how you see things when you shoot them or the back? Like, give me an understanding as an artist. First of all, I've never introduced myself as a photographer, yeah, or an artist. Okay, ever. I don't see myself as a photographer or an artist. What do you see yourself? I as? just creator. I'm a creator of luxury. I love that. I love that. That's what I am. Or magic. It's very like for me, not luxury. It really, it started off. 
I used to print my own work. And I remember I would put these pieces of paper in these chemicals and all of a sudden the image would come onto the paper like magic. So I really feel like it's, forget luxury. Yeah, It's really magic to me. And it's being able to access thoughts in my imagination that I have to get out of my imagination. So I'm not like a photographer and I'm not an, an artist in any way. I just need to get the thoughts out of my mind. So some people sing, some people dance, some people fight. Right? I just create magical images that are lurking in my imagination and I put them to paper from my mind to paper. And it just sort of evolved from there, but I'm not a, I'm not just like a, an artist or a photographer. I don't see myself that way. I never have. When was the last time you, you actually did that? I love that you said that. I mean, actually visually seeing the print come through the paper. I think that's, I'm going to use the word art. That's a lost art. That's something that a lot of people have pushed away from. Um, I, it's funny because my daughter was just at my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my mom's house and uh, she found a box of old cameras and she got them and she went on Amazon to buy 35 uh, millimeter, millimeter film. film and she bought them and she's, and she's all summer been shooting and, 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 and loving it, which I, I find it so Hold cool. on a second. Let me yeah. show you something. Hold on. Look at this here. This is the first camera that I worked with in 1994. This is a Pentax 6.7. I this remember, is I remember those. Yeah. My, my dad had my dad had a very similar one. This is pure art to me. Pure art. I haven't I haven't used this camera in over 20 years, but I look at it all the time and it makes me so happy because it's the first camera I ever I ever used. Well, not the first camera I ever used, but the first camera that I used that was a good camera. But you know what my real camera is? I'm gonna show you my camera. This is my camera, yeah, ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my camera. Your your eye. My, my, my imagination and same with your camera and your daughter's camera. It's, it all comes from your own mind. What, so you found this love for this. What, what was the subject or where did you really start focusing on, on putting your creative side towards? Was it more landscaping? Was it more fashion? Like where did you, where did your careers take you the first path? I'll tell you everyone who picks up a camera before they photograph anybody else, should photograph themselves. Interesting. And do self portraits because if you can do self portraits of yourself and figure out what you want to say about yourself, then you can figure out what you want to bring out of other people. So the key to self awareness when it comes to photography is to do self portraits. And explain me, that. Give me, give me more detail of that. Like explain self portraits. Like, you're like, actually just setting up a, a tripod and shooting yourself. Or like, yes. Yes. Interesting. But, but the reason why I, I did a lot of self portraits was not, it wasn't in an egotistical way. It was in a way to understand what I was looking for in myself. And then I could translate that into photographing other people and what I want to bring out of them. I love it. I love it. I love that mindset, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're creating exactly your, your image in your mind, what you want to see. I love that. You're, with your, with your, I don't even know how to word it now. You confused me. I don't want to say artwork. Your, your, your work. With your work, once you take an image, is there a lot of editing, post editing that you do to bring these lights, all these colors? Like, is it all through the lens? Like, how do you do this all? Or is this all like, like magic? I like, do, I used to do very big commercial assignments on Hollywood backlots. Okay. And I'd have a crew of sometimes up to a hundred people working with me and using up to fifty lights on a job. Wow. And now, now I make just, I don't do commercial photography anymore. I just make my own artwork. And now I just use one or two lights. So some images require more editing than others. And others are just much more straightforward. And you never know until you get into it. The key is to always start. And a lot of people are scared to begin the process. There's a, there's a life so lesson here. Well, because so much of the creative process is I'm great. I'm not great. I'm shit. I think I might be okay. This is awesome. I love creativity. That's the, the, so you got to go on a crazy whirlwind to think that you're good, to think you're not good enough, to think you're shit, to think you might be good, and to realize, you know what? You're awesome. And if you're not willing to go deep, then you're not willing to go deep. 
It all depends on how self-aware you are and how deep you're willing to go within yourself to find the creativity to express yourself to the world in however you want to express yourself. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it, that's why I said there's a life lesson there because you, you, you could utilize that towards anything in life, which I love that. So when you are working with like, do you work with smaller companies now? Do you just do your own large artwork and, and, and like I said, do your own galleries and stuff like that? Like wh where is your focus now and, and how, so, and how has it evolved over the last couple of years? Oh, well, I, I used to work for brands okay. all over the world until I realized that I'm the brand and I don't want to work for brands. So then I created my own artworks and I started showing my work in galleries all over the world because I don't believe in selling my work directly. I think third party validation is what takes you to another level from, from a branding perspective. So I work with top galleries all over the world and it all started for me actually in Berlin of all places. I had a show at a gallery in Berlin called camera work in 2005. And that was the beginning of a crazy whirlwind of being represented by some of the finest galleries all over the world. And that's when I realized I'm the brand. People want to buy my artworks, my imagination, which is interesting because growing up, I felt like no one would ever really listen to me in my words. So I had to create pictures so people would pay attention. And I got people's attention by accessing my imagination and making the photographs that spoke a thousand words. So that was seven, roughly 17 years ago, a little over 17 years ago, that uh, when you're in Berlin, how did that come about? Was that through a contact? How did that moment come Great, about? great question. I had a show at a gallery called Fahey Klein in LA and Elton John walked in and bought literally half the show. And a friend of mine said to me, you should call this gallery in Berlin called Camera Work. And I was feeling I was on a bit of a high because of that moment. So yeah. I just picked up the phone. I called this strange number, 01144 or whatever in Berlin. And the owner of the gallery happened to answer the phone. And I said, hi, I'm David Drebin and I love your gallery. She said, this is crazy. You're calling me because the framers literally walking in right now with a photograph that I recently purchased from a gallery in LA called Fahey Klein. So as I call the gallery, the owner yeah. was waiting for a framed print she just purchased at the gallery in LA. And that's when I realized at that moment, I was really onto something and it really is kind of steamrolled ever since. It hasn't stopped. It's bigger now than ever. We've got worldwide representation and it's really all about the great relationships I've had all along the way. In fact, my last agent in New York an absolute legend named Bill Stockland. He's about to walk in my door in the next five minutes. He just happens to be in the area and he texted me and I said, I'm on a podcast right now, but come on in and wait till you see this guy. He is a legend and you wait till you see what he looks like. If he's, if he's not so shy to actually come on the camera, cause he's an only in New York kind of character, only in New York kind of character. Cause New York is made for outcasts and black sheep and people who never felt accepted in their own hometown. So they come to New York to make it. People come to New York to make it, to make it. And I love the concept. What's, what's, what's a different it. vibe when you're saying that from New York to LA coming from a Canadian, looking at it, they're both places where a lot of artistic people, a lot of actors, singers, they, they'll, they'll spread their wings to do those two main areas. It's a lot of big chefs. What's the different mindset from being in LA to being in New York? I love I LA. I've done a lot of work in LA. I love the light. But for me, I have this concept, which is this. People go to LA to fake it. People go to New York to make it. I love and it. people go to Miami once they made it. Interesting. I never heard that one, though. I love that. Fake it, make it, made it. I love LA. I just feel like I wouldn't be as focused there. And in New York, you, you have to focus. I'm incredibly focused here all day, every single day. And I, I love the vibe. I love the energy. And the energy doesn't lie. It's New York City. In New York, I, I'm, I'm just going to assume, I mean, Toronto's back to somewhat normality. New York is now back to somewhat normality after the last two years, right? Yes. How did you, were you in New York the whole time through, through COVID or you? Well, I was in Miami. 
Miami. Miami. Okay. Miami yeah. Okay. Okay. So you have a place in Miami. You spend a lot of time there now. I like Miami in the in the winter. I like I like I'm a, a snowbird. <laughs> snow okay. Guy. But I don't. For me, I'm on my phone all day, all over the world. It doesn't really matter where I am. I I like I manage my manufacturers all over the world, and I manage my galleries all over the world. That as long as I have my phone, my earpiece, and a couple chargers, it doesn't even matter where I am ever anymore. Yeah. But I built this over the last couple decades. So how many galleries do you have going on at once? Let's talk about that. And, and, and how do you pick your galleries? Do you repeat them? Like what's, what's the, what's the work mindset towards? Okay. Like, and, and also I'm going to throw another question in there. When you're prepping for a gallery, is it like, do you use older artwork or is it always new artwork for that? Does that exhibit? Sorry. A lot of questions there. Very simple. Yeah. A lot of young artists, when they get started, are looking for galleries to believe in them. But I think they need to turn it around and think about galleries that they believe in. So instead of looking for people to believe in you, you should be looking for people that you believe in. And so for me, it doesn't matter if I've got one, two, 10, 20 galleries all over the world. It's really about who do I believe in and nurturing those relationships. And when it comes to art in the galleries, Every market wants something different. What someone wants in Germany is not what someone wants in Istanbul. And what someone wants in Paris isn't what someone wants in New York. So you have to tailor the artistic menu based on where you're showing the works. But it's really about the relationships and if you believe in who you're working with, not if you believe that they believe in you. Interesting. Interesting. Jeff Lopes, man, I like talking to you. I love it. I love it. You're interesting. You're it. interesting guy. I like the backdrop there. I like the backdrop. He's just walked through the door right now. Bill Stockland. You got to see this guy. He's a next level character. Ready? <laughs> Bill, right. come here. Come here. Please come here right now. Look at this guy right here. This guy. This guy was my agent for many years in New York. Just come here right. Look at this guy. This is an only in New York it's character. No, it's only one person. Look at this guy right here. Look at him. <laughs> is this guy not? This is Bill Stockland. This is New York. Great was, to meet you. Where are you? Jeff. Tor Toronto, Canada, Bill. How are you, brother? Listen, New York was made for people like Bill Stockland. Look at, imagine, like, look at this guy. Give me a break. See what I mean? <laughs> yeah, the, myth, so the, 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 the myth, the legend. You got, you got so much hype before you walked in that door. <laughs> Don't believe one thing. Okay, you can believe one thing. This building is unimaginable. Hey, look at the view. You look don't view. see this. I know you don't. Look at the view. Go take care of your podcast. Anyways, <laughs> this, this is Bill. But you know what's interesting is Bill came to my first show in Berlin in 2005. He came. I, I signed with them in 2005. Yeah. And he literally came to my show in 2005. He was at, my, he was at the first show that I had. Remember that show? Yes. In Berlin? Yeah, it's, it's crazy how time flies. Guy. Crazy how time flies, and crazy how I wish you were here. You the the relationships you build, right? And li lifetime relationships, right? Obviously, you see the friendship there, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, we were we were always supposed to be friends. Yeah, because I was. It's very was a, it's very rare, but when you do find, it's very special. Yeah, because he was um, a commercial yeah. agent. He was yeah. a commercial agent and I wasn't really working a lot commercially because I have my own recognizable style, yeah. but people were, people were buying my work as art while I wasn't working commercially. And he would always say to me, you don't need to work commercially. People are buying your art. You're crazy, man. Remember all those conversations we yeah. had? He was like, you don't want to work commercially. Wow. It's bullshit. <laughs> You're selling your art. All those guys want to be like you. So he actually had this vision for me before I had this vision for me. And we became really great friends in, in the meantime. I love it. I love and I, it. I came to New York to meet people like this guy. <laughs> Walking to a place like this, you own the city. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this is a crazy apartment. I how, lived long, in, how, long, how long have you had that apartment for? Well, I lived in a apartment in Sullivan Street for 25 years that had yeah. mice and cockroaches and an elevator that took about a minute and a half to get up to the seventh floor. And a couple of years ago, I, I stumbled upon this place on uh, just off Madison Avenue with the most epic views imaginable of New York. I mean, you're only seeing this. It's, 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 cr it's crazy. It looks like it, it looks like, like a, it looks like it looks like a pictured background. Well, I'm, it's like I live in a movie. I live in one of my own pictures. That's pretty yeah. amazing. Pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. And the real estate in, in New York, this is the, the lifestyle. It's expensive, huh? 
everything's expensive. But for me, I don't see, I don't see how expensive something is. I see the struggle and the perseverance that it took to be able to be in a position like this years of struggling years of believing in myself when others didn't believe in me, I but that. I always believed in myself. I and I think, that. you know, a lot of people want to ask me technical questions about how I take photographs, what galleries that I work with, but that's not really that interesting. What's interesting to me is the battles, the struggles to believe in yourself first, to get the world to see you the way you see yourself. And give, to me, give me give me a couple stories of something. Give me a couple of stories because I think our audience would love to hear some stories of the actual okay. real struggles. Like, give me some stories of yeah, give me a perfect when, example. moments where you're just like, what the fuck is going I on? I got so many. I yeah. mean, there are, I'll just give you one for example. Yeah. I'll never forget when I was just out of school, I had these 10 photographs that I really knew were special. And there was a teacher at Parsons who had a gallery. And I went to her gallery in Chelsea with these prints. And I said, what do you think? She goes, you'll never sell those works ever. They're like fashion photographs. And I thought, I'm not a fashion photographer and style is forever fashions of the moment. And she said, you're never going to sell those, those works. Okay. And I knew I would. And then in the next couple of years, I sold all of them and for a lot. And I actually have her letter. I have her letter here. It's, it's, it's somewhere in here. I've got, I've got a, a whole stack of rejection letters. Like I, I've, I wrote all this stuff down of all the people all the people who didn't believe in me and what, and what they said about me that was wrong, all of them. These are all people who didn't believe in me and what I wrote about how I felt and how I really believed that it would happen for me. I love so it. I, have a, I had a lot of people in the beginning, everyone does, yeah. who doubt you, but yeah. the key is to believe in yourself yeah. because the world doesn't care. No, you know, I when you're young, you no. think the world doesn't care. And then when you get older, you realize the world doesn't care and it's okay. Yeah. You go, from, you go from no one cares to no one cares. And that's a yeah. great thing. Yeah. It's all, it's all, it's all perspective, right? How, how you, how we view everything is perspective, right? And I, I have this conversation all the time. I mean, it's the simplest little crazy thing. Like even when you're, I, I got two little ones. I'm not little anymore. They're, they're, they're in their teens, 14, 16. And I work out with them every single day. And we were coming back from the gym uh, yesterday and my daughter's like, I'm like, my daughter's like, oh, we're having for dinner. And I said this, she goes, oh, I don't want this. I'm like, I stop and I'm like, do you realize how many children in this world would beg for a plate of food right now? And I just said it to her and I looked at her and she stopped and I, and, and I said, that, I go, you got to really flip your perspective on this. And then she's like, dad, thanks, dad, I needed that. And it's like, it's perspective. It's just how, how you view it, right? Your story might be it's sad for yourself, but not sad for someone else. There's always someone in a worse situation. Whip. Everywhere you've been in the world, give me your top two or three places that you've just fell in love with, but at the same time to really, really build a, a connection to your art or your work in that country. Let me tell you something. It's never the places. Interesting. It's always the faces the in the places. Yeah. So I've met incredible people all over the world and I've got friends in Berlin and Vienna and London and Paris who I've had exhibitions with, but I remember the laughs and the dinners far more than any of the sales or any of the sites. It's all about how people make you feel. I love it. And the relationships that you make along the way, like Bill's here right now. I care way more about our relationship and how we've had incredible conversations for 20 years, far more than any money he ever made me, which always. I really did. I really never, I was never driven by the money. I always, I kind of look at it like this. I love girls and I love money, but I never chase girls and I never chase money. Yeah. I don't chase these things. I build my own brand and what's meant to be will be. I love it. 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 And it's very true. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, there, wealth only takes you a certain amount. I mean, happiness is the, the ultimate goal. I mean, wealth should be a, a vehicle to your happiness, right? Happiness for me is just peace of mind. I think yeah. if you, if you can get eight hours sleep and exercise five days a week and drink a few liters of water a day, then 99% of your problems will most likely go away. Let's talk about health. You're obviously very fit. I love working out. I'm, I'm, I've been working out since I was 16. Let's talk about how, how, 
let's talk a little, Mr. Bowie. Let's talk about let's talk about health and 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 how important it is in your life and, and working on taking care of yourself. That's that's my number one priority. I mean, I live around the corner from this place that does unbelievable cryotherapy. I go into a cryo chamber. You do, huh? How long oh, have you been how long have you been doing that for? I've been doing it for a long time, but I haven't done it for a while because of COVID and I couldn't find a machine. But this this place has a chamber. I'm gonna take this guy Bill to the chamber in the next half an hour. Will you go with me, Bill, to cryo? No, 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 no. I'm only taking you, I'm taking you to Yeah, he's he, yeah, he's gonna come. Her name is Han. <laughs> so he's gonna get <laughs> like today, today I'm gonna go get uh, cryotherapy in a chamber. Then we're gonna go I get massage Then we're gonna get uh foot massages. He has a massage. Time, right? He has a massage at four. And I'm going for a massage at 5.30. Bill introduced <laughs> me to the greatest massage therapist I've ever had ever in the world. Her name is Saki. And I go there when I'm in New York twice a week. She walks on my back. I mean, I do acupuncture. Are you on a public podcast now? I'm not, no, just, no, we're just the two of us talking. We're just the two of you. First yeah. Public no, it's just two of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you cut the shit out. Sorry, do you cut the shit out? Or? <laughs> Everything's playing, man. This is awesome. Okay. Are you enjoying it? This is enjoying awesome. This is raw conversation. This is this is why I do this, right? This is the first I, time chatting right now. You feel like an old friend. Yeah, yeah. We're just, we're, you got great energy, man. I love the energy. I, I love it. I love it. So love do you do it. like little cuts of this that we yeah, can? Yeah, we do. We do cuts. We send all that. We've recorded 100 and... God, 180, 586 episodes. I've been a guest on over a hundred other shows. Is this your favorite one you've ever done? Yeah, so far, yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. I just—it's just that energy, exactly. What you said it's just that relaxation, right? Being able yeah. to just have that conversation, like if you've known somebody for twenty years, and we're going to still talk about Toronto and the Maple Leafs still. Like, I'm going to bring that up, but yeah, it's just, so what else? What diet wise? Like, are you are you on a very strict diet? Do you really? Not really. I mean, I do drink a lot of this. I drink a lot of this. I this morning I kind of splurged a little bit and I had grilled cheese and bacon. Which is okay once in a while. Is that bad? I had I do it once a year. I did it though. I did it. He this guy he he's got a crazy diet. Yeah, he has he he's like he has like macrobiotic food. Like seriously. Yeah, he's a macrobiotic. Yeah. This guy is unbelievable. Seriously, follower Georgia style Amicio Kushi, the whole works. Here. Seriously, huh? So are you in Toronto? Toronto can you I can't see you. You gotta sit down. Bill. So you're in Toronto. Toronto, Canada. Born and raised in Toronto, Canada. So as crazy as where where Bill, I mean, where uh, David was born or ra- was raised as a child, we're just a couple blocks away. I'm 45, so he's only a few years older than me. This so this guy right here, Bill, I'm was 74. He's 74. Look at this guy. He was one of the all-time <laughs> photographic agents in New York. One of the all all time, and it's he got a- until a couple years ago when the business changed. Yeah. But he represented the top photographers all over the world in New York. So how are you connecting with David? What is this about? It's just, it's just conversation. Our podcast is, uh, we got a really popular podcast in Canada. We get about 2 million downloads a year. And it was just, it was just somehow met through a, a third party and just uh, just met today. And and, and obviously the, the, the vibe is there. The vibration is there. People come to New off. York to meet a guy like this. Would you see this guy, an agent? I'm getting out of this. He's too embarrassed. Yeah, he's, he's, I told you he'd be like this, right? No, no pass yeah. him. The name of the podcast so I can listen to you. Yes, I appreciate yeah. it. I appreciate it. Bill. Look at this very, guy. very nice meeting you, brother. Well, Anyways. I'm just snoo- snooping around. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Are you into fasting at all? Good Me, question. No. I'm into intermittent fasting, but only when I'm down in Costa Rica. He was asking me the question, not you. <laughs> so I like to eat between 11 and 8 every day. Okay. And I eat pretty clean. Everyone's today. I just felt like splurging. I just sometimes it's good to shock the body a little bit. But He's it's good. It's good once in a while. Just to, yeah, just to yeah. switch it up, right? This is yes. Good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> On the podcast, Bill, stop talking to me. Go sit in the corner. Sorry. <laughs> oh God, he, 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 Bill is remind when he came in with the sunglasses. I'm dying to think of the name right now. Is one of the biggest rock bands of all time. Uh, Canadian band. Getty Lee. Yes. Getty oh, Lee. Head. Baseball. When he walked in, I was like, we got, get, they go. He gets great seats in restaurants. They think he's Getty Lee. Okay. So I'm not the only one that thinks yeah, this. Yeah, he looks like Getty Lee. He's, he's even, he's way cooler than Getty Lee. He's, this guy, this guy, Bill, you know, you come to New York to meet a guy like Bill Stockland. You know, you really do. He can't take the compliments, but I really mean it. He's very, very interesting. He has an unbelievable vision for, a lot of the talent that he represented, he knew where he knew where everyone was going to go. He just knew everyone's direction, and he pointed out my direction when I first started with him in two thousand four. I didn't want to accept it, but eventually I accepted the vision that he had for me yeah. before the vision I had for myself. 
So he was one of many fantastic mentors along the way for me. Mentors are extremely important. Yeah, yeah. And he ha- was a huge mentor for me. At, from a health standpoint also, he introduced me to foot massage, my massage therapist, even diet. So we, we, even though we met for, like for representing me as a photographer, that wasn't what our relationship was ever about. It was, it was always about other things and mentorship. Yeah, I was cool. even I was even more friendship. This is the way you guys are interacting. There's a close. Yeah, yeah. he's There's like a bond around my apartment right now. He's looking at everything. I'm like, what <laughs> the fuck are you looking at right now? He's looking at everything in here. <laughs> yeah, very well. Yeah, we're gonna talk about it after. Sorry, I'm on a podcast right now with Jeff Lopes, who gets two million downloads a year. This guy's a beauty. Bill, stop talking to me for ten more minutes. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> no worries, buddy. So, all the artwork you've ever done. Or artwork, creative work, whatever you want to call it. Has there any, been any pieces that you have just held for yourself you've never sold? No, I, I don't hold any for myself. But what's okay. interesting is the, the ones that I thought would sell don't really sell. And the ones that I never thought would really sell, sell. It's kind of like, it's kind of like rock stars and songs. Yeah. They don't always play their songs that they really want to play at concerts, but they play the songs that the audience wants to hear. So if, the, if, you, if you went to a Rolling Stones concert and they said, we want to play you our new song, most people don't want to hear the new song. They want to hear the old songs. They don't want to hear the new songs. So you got to get to that point where you're not playing the old songs, but people still want to hear the new songs. Bill, you're in the way, you're in the shot, man. Stay out of the shot. Does that make sense? hundred percent. People want to hear the old songs, but I want people to hear the new songs. How has your style changed over the years? I went and from- And making, has it changed? Yeah, because I started okay. off making photographs and yeah. then I started like, of, I started commercially, then I was making photographs of women. Yeah. And I'm actually very good at photographing men, but but most people don't buy- photographs of men as art and I'm just as comfortable photographing men as I am women. And then I started to make photographs of landscapes and then I started making neons and then I started making diamond dust prints and sculptures and etchings on glass. And I got, I'm like a creative director with manufacturers all over the world who execute my vision. And that, and now with all the apps, do you, do you you license, I guess your your artwork to, other companies to use no. on product. Okay. No, no. Okay. And, now, and now I use a lot of my creativity through the apps on Instagram and, and I love TikTok too. I love TikTok. I is mean, it, I've worked it, with, I've worked with top branding agencies in New York yeah. and only to realize that I was pretty good at making my own content. Very, very, very good. Let's talk about, let's talk about Toronto. Let's talk about Toronto Maple Leafs a bit. You're saying 93. So that was when you left Toronto or left, no left, no, I've never, really lived, I've never lived in Toronto full time since I was 15 years old. I mean, I've, I've lived there v- very part time. Yeah. Yeah. So how did your, pa- how did your passion for hockey? When did you start? Did you ever play? My grandfather took me to the gardens. Yeah. My grandfather took me to the gardens. Can you turn that lower, please? What a distraction this guy is. I'm really sorry. <laughs> no, He's entertaining. I'm sorry. <laughs> all good. All good. All good. So your, pa- your grandfather took you to the gardens. So you fell in love with the Maple Leafs. As he- Do you still pay attention to the team? Yeah, I love the team. They upset me every year. I every love year. the Toronto Maple Leafs. They upset me every single year, but I love them. I just love them. I got to manage my expectations with the Leafs. <sighs> I love that picture. You look, like a, you look like a young little young Wayne Gretzky there. 99. <laughs> I love being from Toronto. You know, you can leave Toronto, but Toronto never leaves you. You still have a lot of... Do you have any family still here? Yeah, yeah. Most of my friends. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes the old friends are the kind of the real friends yeah, yeah or you become yourself yeah people see you as as you Jeff or david yeah. before they see you as jeff lopes or yeah. david drebin so yeah. i really cherish my old friends who don't really care what i do or what yeah. i become and they're just about energy laughs and personality how often do you come back to toronto i come in the summer i I love, I love the summer. I don't like the winter. I'll never come back in the winter. <laughs> I'm, I love being from Toronto, but I always knew I could never make it in Toronto yeah, yeah. doing what I do. It's not possible. There's just, there's just not enough fish in the sea. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, sh- I'm, I'm fishing for sharks. How, how often do you travel? Like for, for your work, do you, do you like when you're shooting, do you, are you, are you 
do you shoot a lot in New York still, or do you travel a lot for your shots or like, is, 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 your, is your schedule? I've How traveled around the world. How many days a year are you on the road? I have probably 4 million miles on American airlines that I've wow. traveled wow. and it's 26,000 miles all over the world. So if you do the math, yeah. I've traveled around the world about 150 times by myself, all over the world, around the world, just to make photographs. I love making photographs. That's my real passion. But I was also a waiter for many years, and I don't ever want to be a waiter again, even though it was a great experience. So I like to create art. I like to market the art that I create, and I like to nurture relationships all over the world. Every how does, day. How does that, how does that, if it does affect, but how does that affect your personal life? Like your personal relationships, your, your, are, are you like, are you married or are you like, I don't know if there's something you want to talk about, but it, it, does it, all I'll talk about travel, anything. Man. Does that travel affect your personal life? Like how do yes. you settle yeah. down for really? I've given, first of all, two words, two of my least favorite words yeah. are settle and down. I don't like settling and I don't like down yeah. going on. So I don't like settling down. I, I've had more love stories than I have had life stories. I feel like you kind of choose between love and freedom. And I always chose freedom over love because there is no freedom in security, but has it ever, there's been, security have, you, have you ever had moments and I'm just going to get deep here. Have you ever had moments where, You've you've been traveling for so many days and you just feel lonely. You feel like you, you needed so you wish you had somebody there. Not really. No, okay, interesting. I feel like I've been, I've been I've been married for 19 years, right? So I'm very obviously been with my wife so many years. So it's it's coming from a different mindset. Like I got married when I was 27, 28. I got two kids. So so I'm I'm I've been very settled. So you're the polar opposite. So you're obviously traveling the world, meeting so many people on a regular basis. So it's polar opposite, right? So it's interesting to hear that. I mean, and, and, and I get lonely in crowds, never alone. People's energy affects me deeply because I'm a very, uh, my, I give energy and I want to make people feel really good. I don't need other people to make me feel good. I make myself. I've, 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 I've heard that before. I've had somebody actually say that to me. So I look for, I look yeah. for spiritually uplifting experiences yeah. as opposed to spiritually depleting experiences. Yeah. And depending on people's energy, an experience can be spiritually uplifting or spiritually depleting. So I only get lonely in a crowd, never alone. I love it. 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 What other, what other hobbies do you do? Do you, is there any other hobbies or any other stuff that you have a passion for? I never really think about the word hobby. I think about the word lifestyle. So I, I, love, really how you, I love, I absolutely love how you break everything down. It's so awesome. Do you, tell me why. Tell me why. <laughs> no, because you, you, you put a lot of thought into how you, you use your words. And I think a lot of people don't really understand the magic of how to use words properly mm -hmm. or how to put a thought process into that word or what that word means to them. They just say a word because it's part of the vocabulary. They don't actually put a mindset of like, this word has a certain meaning to me and, and I like it or I don't want it to be described by me. So I love how you've done this about seven or eight times in our podcast where you've taken a word and, and switch it to how it relates to you. So I, I love it. It's a positive thing. Don't think it's a negative thing. It's a thank positive you, thing. Thank you. Thank you. For me, it's, it's just lifestyle. Health for me is first. I make sure I get my sleep, exercise, hydration, and I nurture relationships all over the world. So I think my greatest hobby is having rich relationships, great relationships, because that's what life's all about is making other people feel amazing. That's what I like to do every day, all day. I don't care who it is. I just want to make people feel great. That's all I really want to do. That's it. A few more questions. Um, celebrities. Obviously, you said Elton John bought a whole bunch of your pieces. Any other massive celebrities have you interacted with that have fallen in love with your artwork? or your First of all, I photographed, I photographed many celebrities over the years. Oh, yeah. And I've had many celebrities purchase my work. But... I've mentioned their names in the past and it got me in a whole lot of trouble. No worries then. I, so I don't know why they would ever care, yeah. but I get myself in trouble when I, when I mention who buys my work for yeah, yeah. whatever reason, I don't understand that. I've actually had to sign, sign confidentially confidentiality agreements saying I'm never going to mention their names, which is like, seriously, like, who gives a fuck anyways, whatever.
ever. I'm very grateful that people buy my work, whether they're a celebrity, whether they're someone who spends a half a million dollars on the work or someone who saved for years and years to afford a $6,000 piece. For me, it's all the same. People are people. I was going to ask yeah. you that. Where, where, where is your price range? Because that's a huge gap. You're saying six to five and a half a mil. Is there like, how do you, how do you put a price on your work? I mean, as so my a, work, my work is in a limited edition. Okay. Photographs and diamond dust works yeah, yeah. Of seven and large and 10 and medium. And my work ranges from 8,000 to a hundred thousand us, but I've got people who own 20, 30, 40, 50 works all over the world yeah. who've been collecting my works for years and years. So I have a great client base. I don't sell my work directly. They purchase through my galleries, but they become my friends in the meantime. Yeah, it's kind of a whole 360 lifestyle. Yeah, creating the art, hanging out with the people who buy the art, whether they buy the art or they don't, it's okay. It's yeah. just trying to find like-minded people and spiritually uplifting relationships and yeah. reciprocal relationships too. Yeah, of course. Always. I become clients of my clients. Yeah. Also. Yeah. yeah. Like I just got a mortgage for this apartment in New York. Yeah. And the guy who gave me the mortgage now wants to buy a bunch of my works, but I never got the mortgage. So he would buy the works. He just yeah. wants to buy the works. It's just a reciprocal relationship. I love reciprocal relationships that are not strategic and manipulative. They just sort of happen organically. Yeah. 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 They're the most, the most authentic, right? Yeah. I love that. One last question, David, if something really happened to you today in a few words, how would you want to be remembered or described? by your peers? That's an interesting question. For me, it's all about how I made other people feel. So if someone said, what's your relationship like with David Drebin? And they went, oh my God. Like, it's about how I make other people feel. And often people are always thinking about how others make them feel. But I think the real twist to life is about how you make other people feel. So at the end of the day, it's almost like you're, you're, you're once gone and twice forgotten. We're, we're all here for a short period of time. If you're lucky, you have 30,000 days if you're lucky, 35,000 days if you're lucky. If you're lucky. So it all comes down to the memories in other people's minds about how you made them feel. The end, the end. I make a living creating feelings. That's what I do. People look at the art, it makes them feel something. So I want to make people feel that way with the energy as well. Yeah. It's about making people feel great. Just like, you're very good at it too. You make people feel very safe, very calm yeah. and great. Also non-judgmental, very empathetic. I miss, and I miss, I miss, I'm just being me. Right. And, and the only way either, to be either you're going to like it or you're not, it's just who I am. I'm just very laid back, very honest, very open. Right. So, I love it. I love it. I will tell you once. I can't wait to see the clips. I can't wait to see the clips. Yeah, you're, it, it'll it'll be out in a couple of weeks, two weeks, not, not next week, the week after. So this has been awesome. I want to say thank you. I want to say uh, say hi to Bill if he, he's still around. Say Bill, hi to not Bill. a character. Was he a character? I, I, the whole time when he came on screen, I was like, "What's the name of the band? What's the name?" Getty of the Lee. Band? <laughs> he's saying Getty Lee. This guy's spectacular. Only an only in New York character, Bill Stockman. <sighs> only in New York. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I would say David is the most successful of all of the people I represented. That's amazing. You hear that? Yeah, amazing. That's a big honor. Wow. Big honor. Big honor. And he had the vision for me before I had the vision for me. Which is pretty special. Yeah, it's awesome. We're going for uh, foot massages now, cryotherapy. <laughs> We're going to go see Saki for massages. We got a whole day ahead of us, man. Korean lunch right now. And we're going to go for Korean lunch too right now. <laughs> How can our audience get a hold of you? How can our audience follow you, get a hold of you? Let's give us all the my, details. My, my TikTok is daviddrebin.com, D-R-E-B-I-N.com. My Instagram is at daviddrebin. A lot of people reach out to me. I, I respond to everybody. Awesome. And I just want to inspire other people to be themselves because there's nothing worse for me than wasted talent. I love it. I, love I just it. I don't it. like wasted talent. I love it. I appreciate this, man. Next time you're in Toronto, you got it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to actually have your number now. So I've saved it. So I'm going to shoot you, you have my number. Next time you're in Toronto, shoot in, we'll grab a bite. I'd love to. Uh, I'll come to St. Clair and Dufferin. I'm up in Brampton now. I live in Brampton. Brampton. I, yeah. But oh, okay. I mean, my, 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 my mom's still in Tobacco. So I would, uh, I would love to uh, come up and grab a bite and uh, hang out for the day with you.
Love to meet you too. Thanks so much for having me on your show. Thank you. Bro.